Give me the number 514, 514. What a wonderful Savior we serve, amen? Let's sing about it. 514 on that first and last verse. He's a wonderful Savior to me. All right. I was lost in sin, but Jesus rescued me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was bound by fear, but Jesus set me free. He's a wonderful Savior to me. For He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Verse 3. Dearer grows the love of Jesus day by day. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Sweeter is His grace while pressing on my way. He's a wonderful Savior to me. For He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. Amen. Thank you so much. You can be seated. Good evening, everyone. So glad to see you all here tonight. So let's pray and get right into the service for tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this evening. Thank you for everyone who's able to gather here tonight. Please be with the message tonight. Uh, please be with Dad as he preaches to us. Help us all to get something from it. Thank you for being so good to us, and thank you for loving us. In your name I pray, amen. All right, 587, everybody, 587. <clears throat> Victory in Jesus, you know the words. In case you don't, 587. I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Verse 3, I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angel singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. You sing! He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Amen. Thank you. All righty. Before we go on to our next, our scripture songs, we're going to find out if we have any first-time visitors in the building tonight. So if you are visiting our church for the first time and you did not yet receive a visitor's card, just go ahead and raise your hand way up higher, and our ushers will be sure to give you one that you can fill out and turn in. You'll get a cup with some chocolates in it. So visiting for the first time, raise your hand way up high. And I do not see any first-time visitors, so Miss Paulette, looks like it's just us chickens here tonight. I love the rotation we have up there. It's very good. All right, we can go to go to scripture songs now. Psalms 47.1, oh, clap your hands. All you people clap your hands. I think we're all familiar with this one. We know this one. I love this one. Um, why don't we stand up for the night, get our blood flowing, our energy going. Oh, clap your hands. Let's sing it out now. Let's get our spirit ready for the evening. Here we go. Oh, clap your hands. All the people clap your hands. Oh, clap your hands. All the people clap your hands. We shout unto God. Praise God with the voice of John. Oh, clap your hands. All the people clap your hands. All the people clap your hands.
Let's sing that one one more time. That one's a good positive one. Gets our blood flowing tonight. So let's sing it one more time. Here we go. No, clap your hands. All you people clap your hands. Oh, clap your hands. All you people clap your hands. And shout unto God. Praise God with the voice of triumph. Oh, clap your hands. All you people clap your hands. All you people clap your hands. Very good, very good. We can go ahead and go to the next one. I forgot. Romans 8, 28, we know that all things work together for good. One of our newer ones, we haven't done it in a while, but I think we got it. We're familiar with it, so let's sing it out if we do know it. Let's sing it out now. Here we go. And we know that all things, all things, all things work together for good. Yes, we know that all things, all things, all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them that love God, to them that love God, and are called according to His purpose. For we know that all things, all things, all things work together for good. Yes, we know that all things, all things, all things work together for good. Let's sing that one one more time. I sure do like that one. Really think about the words now. Here we go. And we know that all things, all things, all things work together for good. Yes, we know that all things, all things, all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them that love God, to them that love God. Purpose. For we know that all things, all things, all things work together for good. Yes, we know that all things, all things, all things work together for good. Very good, very good. We got one more for the evening. 2 Timothy 1 7 For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Uh, we haven't sang this one in a while. Miranda, there we go. We're going to sing this one out once or twice. Just really think about it now. Get your hearts ready for tonight. Here we go. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of. Let's go right into it one more time. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Very good singing, everyone. You can be seated for a second. Our missionary letter tonight is from the Heron family. They are missionaries to Russia, and they've been on the field since 1996. Witness opportunities. Russia has very strict laws that limit missionary activity. For this reason, our family must be extra careful in our personal witness to people outside of our home. Random distribution of literature is out of the question. As a result, we have become highly attuned to the one-on-one -on -one personal interactions that we have with people, whether it be in a store or taxi or at the park or gym. We are always looking for ways to begin constructive conversation with those the Lord brings into our path with the goal of sharing our faith in Jesus Christ and his gospel message. Lyud Mila is a retired school director who lived and worked in Kazakhstan. We met at the gym and talked for some time. She shared that her son had a drug addiction who sought help from a Protestant rehab organization. I could tell she was more comfortable talking about spiritual matters than most Russians, which led to many gospel witness, which led to my gospel witness. On leaving the sport club, I passed her again in the lobby where I stopped and asked if we could exchange cell phone numbers. We did, and I was later able to send via social media a powerful e-booklet explaining in more detail the gospel message. Since our family lives just two buildings from hers, we are praying that she might one day visit our Bible study to learn more of Christ. Please pray that, please pray that seeds sown by others and myself will take hold and bring forth new life in Christ. Bible study. At our Bible study, we finally finished our series of lessons from the Seeker's Bible Study course. This course does a great job to explain the importance of biblical repentance and faith, two necessary steps to being born again in Jesus Christ. Yuri sat through each lesson carefully listening and asking questions as the, as the gospel message was preached. 
please join with us in prayer for the seed now planted to grow, leading him to a saving faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. I praise God that I have been able to stay in contact with Oleg. He was a former classmate of ours. He was a former classmate of our daughter, Abigail, when we lived in the village several years ago. WhatsApp has been a good means to converse with him because he lives five hours north of K name in Russia. Pray that, pray that my continuing witness will fall on, the, on good ground. He is married and has a stepdaughter. We are hoping that our witness will extend to his wife and her young daughter as well. Please pray with us to this end. Abigail adjusting to life in America. Thank you so much for praying for Abigail's long trip back to the USA. This makes two daughters in the last year that we have sent back to America to, to pursue their higher education goals. For a girl born and raised in Russia, she is adjusting wonderfully to life in America. My parents, sister, and her husband have been an enormous blessing to Abigail by helping her get to and from work as well as with completing needed errands, among other things. Couple this with a great sending church, the members of which have welcomed her with open arms. Bonnie and I are so thankful to the Lord for those who have stepped in to be a blessing to our Abigail when we, are, when we ourselves are not able to be there at this important time of transition in her life. On her second week there, she was hired full-time at Brahms, a fast food ice cream, ice cream chain near my parents. When not at work, she has been busy getting needed TB testing and other vaccinations required by a Pensacola Christian College. On June 2nd, she flies to Pensacola to begin full-time employment alongside of her sister Elizabeth on the PCC maintenance team. She has one more important hurdle while in OKC. She must pass her on-the-road driving test in order to convert her OK learner's permit into a full Oklahoma driver's license. Please pray she passes the first time around. All right, stand with me, please, and turn to number 495. 495, let's have our handshaking time and sing about count our blessings. We're singing on first one. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Go ahead and shake hands.
All right, on verse number two, are you ever burdened? Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly. And you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Last verse. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Amen. All right, you may be seated this evening. Let's take our Bibles and turn to Ephesians chapter number 5. And uh, praise the Lord for uh, good song service this evening. Great to see everybody here tonight. We will dismiss our kids right after the uh, special. I want to just take a moment and thank you all so much for uh, everything Sunday night. It was a blessing to, to be together and have fellowship. I hope you all got a, some cookies and apple pie. And uh, what a blessing it was to be around that sweetness there. Um, I didn't, I don't know why I forgot to mention it Sunday evening, but I, it's kind of worked out good. I can mention all this evening some good news in this crazy world. Uh, there was one saved in junior church Sunday morning in the fourth through sixth grade class. And uh, someone that rides the bus, right? All right, so praise the Lord for that. Then there was 11 saved in the prison Sunday evening. So I love cookies and apple pie, but that's, that's a whole lot of sweetness right there. Amen. And then I got a phone call Monday morning from... Kissick, young lad, is it okay to go ahead and say it? I mean, you're not ashamed to tell it. Caleb Kissick got saved on Monday morning in Nashville, Tennessee, while you are still on vacation. What a way to end, talk about a sweet weekend of souls being saved uh, from the prisons to junior church to one of our own church family's kids getting saved on vacation. The Lord is good. I love being able to report salvation of souls. Never gets old. Never gets old. Tonight, let's look at Ephesians chapter 5. Let's look at verse number 18. Verse number 18. Actually, let's go ahead and back up to verse 16. It's all good there. But verse 16. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, and singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God, and the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. If you'll see there in verse number 18, it opens up with that verse, and there is no period again until the end of verse 21. So I know English teachers say not to avoid run-on sentences, but God didn't get that memo. God likes to have long sentences. But tonight I want to talk about one of the keys to balancing your spiritual walk with the Lord that I think is so vital. It is hard to figure out who really is spirit full, who's spirit full of the spirit, spirit filled. Um, it's not like we could take some kind of a radar thing and tonight and just go over people and be like, eh, you're not spirit filled. Yeah, well, this person is. However, there are some things you can see consistently in a spirit filled person, and God gives us these things. Um, we had a little bit of sickness in our home the last week, and, and you know how it is a lot of times when you. You go to Google nowadays because Dr. Google knows everything, right? And uh, we go to Dr. Google before we go to the real doctor sometimes, hoping that Dr. Google will help us from a trip to the waiting room and all that fun stuff. But a lot of times what we do when we try to figure out what's wrong is we type in symptoms, right? You type in symptoms and then you hope that that symptom search, what is it called, SEO, search engine optimi optimization, is that what it's called, Piper? SEO, search engine optimization will narrow down the potential sicknesses to that, to those symptoms that you listed. God gives us, I don't want to use the word symptoms because it seems like sometimes it's negative, but symptoms isn't always a negative thing. Symptoms of a spiritful Christian, and we want to talk a little bit about that this evening. So uh, the key verse will be verse 20, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this time we'll have a special, we'll dismiss the kids and move from there. Thank you so much.
The world didn't need another carpenter. So why did God now have a hammer in his hands? The world didn't need another fisherman. So why'd he cast a net in waters he could command? If not to show us that he knows us and whatever this life throws us, he's the God who chose to live it all firsthand. He's walked right where you've walked, stepped right where you've stepped, cried the tears you've cried, felt the pain you felt. He stepped out of glory and into your story. So the next time you don't think he understands, remember it was for you that God would bend to be a man. The world didn't need another tyrant with a fist of iron demanding we all bow. The world instead would see a humble servant, a savior king with thorns his only crown just to show us that he loves us and though he rules and reigns above us he would make a way to take us by the hand yeah he's walked right where you've walked stepped right where you've stepped cried the tears you've cried felt the pain you felt he stepped out of glory and into your story so the next time you don't think he understands remember it was for you that god would bend to be a man this man of sorrow, acquainted with our grief. You've never faced a single thing he's not already seen. And he's never distant, he's never far away. He's the only God who could ever lean in close enough to say, I've walked right where you've walked, stepped right where you've stepped, cried the tears you've cried, felt the pain you felt. I stepped out of glory right into your story. So the next time you don't think I understand, Oh, the next time you don't think I understand, remember it was for you. I would bend to be a man. This kid may dismiss. Thank you so much. Here we are in Ephesians chapter 5, and uh, the title is very simple. It's just say it and say it again. Say it and say it again. Say it and say it again. And uh, I like the graphic here. It says, uh, let's see, all this is thanks. Thank you, donke, mercy, grazie, gracias. I don't even know what the, how to pronounce that last phrase. But these are all the phrases that are very familiar phrases in languages around the world, and it's a simple act of being thankful. And I feel like in these last days as Christians we need to up the ante in the area of gratitude and being thankful. We have been conditioned by the news media, by the sports world, by just everything to always find the negative in things, to find the bad in things, to find a reason to gripe or complain. And it's so vital I think as Christians today to really 
push ourselves in this area of, of balance and being grateful. I don't think we ever will be unbalanced by being too grateful. Um, but I think if we're not grateful enough, it can cause us to be unbalanced. So the more grateful we are, the more we are thankful for God and his goodness, the potential of balance is, is, is there. It's realized. And we can, we can get to a level of Christianity that really just, just it heals our own spirit and it heals the spirit of those around us. Now, life is too short and God's been too good. And so tonight, I was thinking about this. I had this prepared about a week or two ago and have been thinking about this a lot as we, as we head into the, the, this 25th deal last weekend and ready to move on. But still, it just causes you to pause sometimes and just be thankful for what you have in your life, where you're at in your life, and for all the blessings that God has given to us. In this particular passage tonight, I want to give us three things tonight, and I may continue this series for the next few Wednesday nights, just because I think all of us, myself included, all of us, those watching online, everywhere, we can definitely be challenged to be more grateful, to be thankful for what God has done for us. And uh, it's easy, and I, I struggle sometimes. I mean, I, right now, sometimes I find myself complaining about our government, complaining about uh, the situation of America and the lack of uh, leadership in the White House and, and all those things. But at the same time, I realize that I'm not in India right now with 150 churches burned to the ground and hiding from my life, and I'm still in a free country. And I'm still able to preach freely, and we're able to sing about Jesus tonight freely with no fear of, of the government coming in. And they keep saying it's going to happen. I remember 10 years ago they said it's going to happen. 10 years later, it still hasn't happened yet. We still are, for some reason, God in his goodness, allowing us to worship freely and preach freely and sing freely about Jesus Christ, the Savior. And so tonight, as you see this passage here, we, you see the talks about, in verse 15, walking circumspectly, not as fools. Circumspectly is a word that can, I guess, be in the same neighborhood as balance. Um, but you walk in a balanced way. Verse 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise and not understanding what the will of the Lord is. And the Bible says, be not drunk with wine when it's excess, but be filled with the Spirit. God commands us to be filled with the Spirit. So tonight, by way of introduction, let me just remind you what fullness of Spirit really is. The Bible says Jesus was given the Spirit without measure. <laughs> he was a completely empty vessel, pure, perfect. And, and when the Holy Spirit came into him, he got all of Jesus Christ. And I thank God for that beautiful picture of how God the Son in human form was completely full of the Holy Spirit of God. And then as you study the life of Christ, you see him in fullness of the Holy Spirit, being led of the Spirit of God and doing all the things that the Spirit of God even led him to do, humanly speaking. And then when you come to us, how do we define spirit fullness? And I've heard preachers say this, and I think it's a good description, uh, an explanation on how we know we're spirit full or filled with the Spirit is, is not necessarily that we get more of the Spirit, but it's that the Spirit gets more of us. And I believe we're living in a, in a time where the yielding, which is a New Testament doctrine of yielding submission, where we yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit of God, where we ask Him to lead us, where we ask Him for His guidance and His direction, it just seems like it is a doctrine of yesteryear. We, as Christians, have arrived, especially in America. We've got it all figured out. We know how we're supposed to be as Christians. We figured out how uh, we can be to impress other Christians and impress other church members. When it comes right down to it, sometimes if you study the Bible out, you'll find out that it's not necessarily what we have defined it to be. I think it's fascinating that the Holy Spirit fullness here is compared to being drunk with wine when it's excess. I think it's interesting when you look at that concept because when someone is drunk with wine when it's excess, one big thing happens to them. They lose all concern of what other people think about them. They begin to behave in a way that stands out. I'm not saying it's always good, but they do. And a spiritful Christian sometimes will stand out, not for their own glory, not for their own uh, intents of, of self-promotion, uh, you know, but rather to the glory of God. So as you study this passage out, you find in verse number 19, the Bible says that speaking yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and making melody in your heart to the Lord. That, those are beautiful principles, and, and, and maybe we'll get into that some next week. Uh, but, but if you parallel that with James chapter 3, you see the beautiful teaching that what comes out here is a testimony of what's going on in here. The Bible says in James chapter 3 that the tongue no man can tame. But it is impossible, I've learned this, to bless and, to bless and curse at the same time with the same tongue. So if I am blessing God with this tongue, at the same time it is impossible to curse with the tongue. 
And the Bible teaches us that. The Bible says in James chapter 3 that it's easier to uh, manipulate or control a horse or a massive ship, a, a water vessel, rather than the tongue of a man or the tongue of a woman or the hands of a deaf person, right? As we uh, a lot of times abuse that, and myself included. But then tonight in verse number 20, I just love this one. It says, giving thanks. It's a command. It's not a suggestion. It's not an idea. It's not a recommendation. Giving thanks, and it tells us how often we're supposed to do it. When? Always. Always. Giving thanks always for what? Tell me, church, all things unto who? God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And being thankful, being thankful, what a challenge all of us could, uh, could, could respond to tonight. All of us, those watching online, here in the building, to just be more grateful. Number one tonight, I believe it starts with, and I know you've heard me preach this so many times, and I'm going to preach it again. Listen, church, never forget the day you got saved by the grace of God. Be thankful for the salvation that God gifted to you and me. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. It is a gift. God gifted you and me salvation by grace through faith. And, and I'll be honest with you, I believe one of the reasons the churches of America are dying and Christians are backsliding, Christians are fading away, and Christians have lost the power and the fullness of the Holy Spirit is because we have forgotten about where it all started because none of this would make sense. The Bible wouldn't make sense. Spirit fullness wouldn't even be possible without the day of salvation where Jesus Christ became your personal Savior. And to testify that 12 individuals in the last few days got saved in the junior church, in the prison ministry, and at, 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 a, at a vacation home where they accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior to get born again, to be saved by His grace. And we've lost that joy. We've lost that shout. We've lost the attitude of gratitude for this precious gift of salvation. Tonight I ask you to go back to the place Go back to the time. Go to where it was. What was happening? What was the weather like that day? What were the circumstances like? What was the situation in your life? Were things going good or were they not going good? Were you young? Were you old? Were you at work? Were you at home? Were you happy? Were you sad? Whatever it is where Jesus Christ it finally made himself, re re revealed himself to you and me, and we understood really with a heart the need for salvation. When did you get saved? Where did you get saved? Some of you, it's been over 50 years ago. Some of you, it's been 50 days ago. But it doesn't matter. We all got saved the same way. The cross. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. Thank God His blood is not a respecter of persons. And all of us get saved by putting our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And God becomes our Father. And Jesus becomes our Savior. And the Holy Spirit becomes our Comforter. And what a blessing it is tonight to know that we are saved. I mean, sometimes, just sometimes, I ask God to forgive me. Because I believe when we get to heaven, we'll really reach the full potential of our gratitude for that. But even here on earth, to take a moment, to take a few minutes every day and just thank God for reaching down his hand of grace and mercy and saving our soul. There's 8 billion people on this planet right now. 8 billion people on this planet. And we know the numbers are, are, as, as they continue to show. The statistics of genuinely born-again people are, are smaller and smaller all the time because many of these new people are being born into countries that are anti-Christian, anti-God, anti-Bible that we read and believe. And yet God has allowed us to be born in America where the gospel is still preached freely and we could hear the gospel and receive Jesus Christ as our Savior, admitting and understanding that it wasn't our religion that could save us or Catholicism or the Methodist church or the Lutherans or the Baptist church or a priest but Jesus Christ and him alone where were you when you got saved what was the weather like that day was it summer was it winter was it in your parents bedroom was it in the Sunday school classroom was it at your home was it at a workplace what room were you at when you got saved was it fall was it spring what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, church, never, ever, never, ever get over the day that you've been saved. God has gifted salvation to you and me. We could not earn it if we tried it. We couldn't buy it if we tried it. There'd be no hope for heaven and salvation without it being the benevolent gift from God himself.
through his son, Jesus Christ. Thank God for salvation. Number two, real quickly tonight. I want to take a moment and thank God for the saints of God. Look at Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, in verse number 1, Paul, Paul oftentimes addressed the saints in all the churches. He addressed the Christians there. And, and he, he talks to the saints freely. He, he encourages all of them in the different churches that he wrote to and the different regions and locations that he wrote to, encouraging them and getting them to realize that you get to be a saint today. I, I'm so glad. I always tease that Mrs. Carlisle is our, as our, as our standard church ordained saint, Saint Suzanne Carlisle. She hates it when I say that. But there's a lot of religions that teach you don't get saint to it until you've until after you die or until you do, you do a certain level of success in religion, in the religious world, and man measures it up and says, wow, you deserve to be called a saint. Biblically speaking today, if you've been saved by the grace of God, you are a saint. That's what the Bible teaches. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from our God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. The saints of God. As you look around this room tonight, look around, you see everybody in here that's saved is a saint. That's right. I know, some, I know it shocked some of you. And I know you might even be disappointed. But even when I look in the mirror, I can say, hey, that's Saint Randy right there. Not because of anything I've done, but because of what Jesus Christ has done for me. And if you're saved tonight and you're married to a saved person, you're married to a saint. If your children are saved, this is a hard one, moms, I know. But your children are saints. They are saints, biblically speaking. I'm not getting a lot of amens on that one, I know. It's just it's, it's, it's what it is. It's real. But to be a saint, we are saints tonight. And, and listen, not only that, it's, it's a blessing to know and rejoice of others getting saved. I mean, to think how a young boy rode the bus Sunday morning, a bus kid, rode the bus to church a Sunday morning. And he goes to junior church, and he becomes a saint because somebody preached the Bible to him, because somebody picked him up, because somebody visited him. And then 11 in the prison service Sunday evening because some men and ladies were willing to leave and they missed out on the pie and the cake, cookies, and they went to a jail cell and preached the gospel, and they became saints. Isn't it amazing that there's a lot of saints in prison tonight? There's a lot of saints in, in situations that we wouldn't expect saints to be there. But to be thankful for each other as saints, to rejoice in knowing that as I look around this room tonight, I'm looking at a congregation of saints, people that have been saved by the, by the grace of God, just like I have been saved. Nobody gets saved any different. All circumstances might be different. The situation of life might be different. But when it boils down to it and we all got saved, salvation, as I said in the statement number one, to be able to say we're saved and look around and know that we are saints in the family of God, what a blessing that is tonight. Be thankful for the saints. Be thankful for your salvation. Never get over that gift that God has given to us. The fact that God paid attention to you and me. May we be so full of gratitude that there's no room for negativity, no room for, for complaining, no room for the things that we, we, can, we are conditioned to be like. Just be thankful tonight. Number one, be thankful for salvation. Number two, be thankful for the saints. Number three, I love this one. Be thankful that we get to stand for him. This one seems like it's becoming a, a real foreign issue to Christians. But look at verse number 10. The Bible says in verse number 10, it says, uh, of, of, oh, I'm sorry, I mean Galatians. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. It says in verse 10, it says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take you the whole armor of God that may be able to be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, to stand. It is a privilege and a blessing to, to, to be able to stand for the Lord. And I know it may sound strange because sometimes it seems like it's almost like a, a badge of honor in the area of suffering because we've had to stand for God. Because maybe we experienced some persecution or we experienced some, some hard times. But the fact of the matter is we should be thankful that we can stand for him because he is worthy to stand for tonight. And I wonder as we look in the society today what, people are, what the world is standing up for. What is the world standing up for? The wickedness. We know what June 1st brings. What, what they celebrate the month of June is just, it just grieves me. It breaks my heart to see that our country's gone that far. And we've become such a, a country that embraces sin and we just, we condone it and, and, and people are afraid to speak out against it. But the Bible still says sin is sin, amen? 
and we ought to stand against it. But notice the, the steps here. Number one, when you realize how grateful you are for salvation. Number two, you are grateful for the saints. It then affects the spirit of our stand. We stand in such a way that we're not ugly to people, but we stand for the truth unapologetically because we know the truth can change their lives as it's changed our lives tonight too. The truth is what is necessary today. And to stand for the truth and to stand upon the truth and to stand with the truth. Thank God again, back to the subject of balance. The Bible says in John chapter 1 that Jesus was full of grace and truth. And to be able tonight to be thankful that I can stand for him. And even if it means sometimes suffering for him, what a blessing and an honor because no amount of suffering in my life, no amount of persecution in my life will ever even equal to a drop of what Jesus Christ did for you and me. Amen. So to be thankful tonight for salvation, to be thankful tonight for the saints, and to be thankful tonight that we have the honor to stand for him. What a blessing. Tonight, I challenge all of us to up the ante, to be more grateful than we've ever been before, to find reasons every day to be thankful to God, to be thankful for our homes, our families, our children, the food, the clothes we eat, Air conditioning this time here. Who's thankful for air conditioning? Thank God for air conditioning. Woo, I love air conditioning. Sean Campbell has solar powered air conditioning. See, he loves it. He has solar powered air conditioning. The very sun that heats his house is giving the energy to cool his house. What a blessing, right? Just all the things that we should be grateful for. I challenge all of us this summer, as we enter the month of June soon, just to celebrate that the principle and the command and the blessing of being a thankful Christian. Thankful. Heads about eyes are closed. Thankful. Listening to well tonight. Hello, Pastor Randy Digman here of Bible Baptist Church, Jefferson City, Missouri. I'm going to take a moment and express to you what our main vision and purpose is of this ministry. You see, much of this world today has a question. It's a question that was asked in John chapter three by one person. It's a question that is asked by the masses, but when you really think about it, it's really a question we all have to come to grips with, face to face with, one on one in our lives, sometime in our life. The question is this. Where will I spend eternity? And that question was asked by a religious leader by the name of Nicodemus in John chapter 3. He approached Jesus Christ in the middle of the night and had a question about spiritual matters. Well, good thing for Nicodemus. He came to the right person at the right time because Jesus Christ is the answer in spiritual matters. You see, many of us have questions about that, and man has tried in many of its efforts to answer that question with their own ideas and philosophies. We've tried to come up with ideas on how to get us to heaven, how to confirm our way to heaven. But the fact is we got to find out what God says about eternal things. And that's why asking Jesus Christ that question is so vital because when you ask Jesus a question, you get the answer. And as the question was asked, Jesus answered simply this, you must be born again. In John chapter three, that's what he said to Nicodemus. And that's the same thing he says to you and to me, even today. You see, God is God of this universe, but he's not everybody's father. What does that have to do with John chapter 3? Well, think about this. We all have birthdays. We all are physically born under this physical planet. Or else you wouldn't be able to watch me or I wouldn't be able to sign to you right now or talk to you at this time. But God, being a spiritual being, knew that though our bodies are temporal, our spiritual part of us, our spiritual anatomy of us, is an eternal thing. And so God says, I'm more concerned about the spiritual issues. And that's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for you and me 2,000 years ago and live again three days later so that you and I can have a spiritual birthday and know for sure that heaven is our home. Well, that leads to the next question. Why do we need a spiritual birthday? Well, it's simple. We're all sinners. We've all broken God's law and God's commands. But God loves us so much so that he let Jesus Christ become the substitute for your sin and my sin. So that if we recognize and admit that we are sinners, we can then trust in Jesus Christ as our substitute. And more so than that, our personal Savior and know that on top of our physical birthdays, we have a spiritual birthday now in that God becomes our father, we become his sons, daughters, we become his children, and we know we're going to go to heaven someday. My friend, it's very simple. It's not about what the church says, or what I have ideas about, or what you have ideas about. It's finding out what God says directly to you and me. And he did it right there in the Bible, and in particular, John chapter 3, when Jesus says, you must be born again. If our church can help you with that question, if you have any questions about that, we can give you some answers. We'd be glad to help you in any way we can. Again, Pastor Randy, personally thanking you for watching the message. And again, if there's anything we can do for you, let us know. God bless and make it a great day.